The next thing I'd like to look at is forced browsing. And when we talk about forced browsing, we're talking about a similar concept to what we just saw with spidering. But instead of just following through known paths in the application, we're going to go and hit a whole bunch of stuff that may not even exist. Now the reason we're going to do this is because we want to try and discover other resources which may not be accessible just by either following the links that are visible on the site or accessing common resources like the robots.txt file we just saw. So for example, might there be an admin directory? And for that matter, could there be an unprotected admin interface behind it? Or perhaps an admin interface that we could then probe further to see if it had vulnerabilities in it. Perhaps there's a SQL injection vulnerability, which would get us as an attacker into the system. So as part of reconnaissance and footprinting, forced browsing helps us build up the profile of how the application is put together. Now in this demo, I'm going to use Burp Suite. I'm going to use the free edition, and we will see some limitations on that in just a moment, but it is going to be enough to demonstrate the concept. And again, just like with NetSparker, there are other tools that can do forced browsing. I've just picked Burp because it's very easy to demonstrate. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm presently proxying my machine through Burp. So I've gone into my proxy settings and I've pointed them to the default setup that Burp gives us, which is running on 127.0.0.1 and port 8080. Now here's what that means. I'm going to go and bring up a Chrome window. So here's our Supercar Showdown website, the vulnerable site. And all I'm going to do is click a link. So we'll just go up here and click on the leaderboard link. Now in the background, in Burp, you can see that the proxy tab just went orange. So let's now jump back to there and click on that tab. Now we'll see as we click on proxy beneath that, we can see that there's a bunch of other tabs and the intercept one is both selected and orange. And what we're now seeing here in the raw tab is the request that we just made in the browser. So it was a get request to forward slash supercar forward slash leaderboard. So what's happened here is that Burp has just captured that request. What I'm going to do now is go down to this raw request and right click. This is going to give me a bunch of options, but the one that I want is send to intruder. Now, once we do that, the intruder tab goes orange. Let's now go up to that and we can see a few more options here. A little bit further down the screen, we have this target and the attack target is hackyourselffirst.troyhunt.com. So our vulnerable website. What I want to do now though is jump on over to positions and when we load this tab we can see the raw request here. Now not only do we see the raw request but we see some highlighting and it's here on the cookies. Session ID, visit start, so on and so forth. What Burp allows you to do here is define dynamic components of the request and in doing that you can then go and launch a whole range of different attacks that substitute those dynamic components with other values. In fact, in my course on ethical hacking SQL injection, I show how to do fuzz testing using Burp and substituting these highlighted sections here for a whole range of different typical attack scenarios. In this case though, what I want to do is just clear those out. And I'm going to go over and select everything in the path after the forward slash. Now I'm going to add that. And we can see that this section now gets highlighted. So this is going to become the dynamic component that we're going to do our forced browsing with. So really what we're saying is we are going to now substitute the URL for other values and then see what comes up. Now that we've defined that area, let's go and pick a payload because we need to decide what we're going to substitute into that path. Now what I'm going to do is load a list of directories that I would like to force browse. Now before I do that, I want to show you what a typical one looks like. So let's have a look at this one. Here's a good example, and this is the one that's used in OWASP ZAP project. And as you can see here, after we get past the initial comments, we're seeing paths like CGI bin. So that would be a pretty common path that you'd want to look for when you're force browsing an application. This list goes on and on and on. 
with all sorts of different paths, some which are highly likely to exist in most applications. But forced browsing is just brute force. Make as many requests as possible and see what comes back. And lists like this tend to be built up from real live web applications, so they do actually have some practical history. These can be very extensive. If we jump down to the end of this file, we can see that there are nearly 142,000 rows in here. So if we plug this into our forced browsing, that is a lot of requests to make. I want to try and demo this with some amount of brevity. So what I'm going to do is jump back into Burp, and I'm going to load in a special list that I prepared for this demo. And it's this one just up here, Hack Yourself First Pars. Now if we have a look at this list here, we can see CGI bin that we saw just before. We can see admin which I mentioned. And of course we can see a bunch of other ones as well. That's plenty to get us started. So what I'm going to do is go up to Intruder in the navigation and start attack. Now here's where we're going to see a warning. And this is about using the free version of Burp. And the main thing here is that the attacks are time throttled. So this is going to be fine just to demonstrate the process of forced browsing. But if you do want to use this in a more real world scenario, then the commercial version might make more sense. So let's say OK to that and we'll let it get started. And what we're seeing now is those requests going out. So there's the ones for CGI bin and admin that we saw just before. In fact, we can still see them behind the window here off to the left. Now here's the thing about forced browsing. A bunch of stuff is going to return absolutely nothing of any interest whatsoever. So for example, the CGI bin and the admin requests. They're returning 404, so their page not found. The vast majority of results, when you're doing forced browsing reconnaissance, are going to be negative. There's going to be nothing of any interest whatsoever. However, when we see results that are in HTTP 200, so an OK status, so that is a resource actually exists there, that becomes enormously interesting. And what we're actually seeing here is several interesting results. So one of them is this help path. Now we're going to look at the help path a bit more later on. And as you'll see then, that actually gives us some pretty handy information. The next three though are particularly interesting. Backup.zip, database.zip, and database.back. Now, they are pretty self explanatory titles, and particularly when we look across at the content length, and that database.back being nearly a 7 meg file, that is very interesting information. And one of the first things I would do in a reconnaissance and footprinting exercise is have a look at what might be in that database.back file. Because if it's what it sounds like, then that is going to be enormously useful information. One of the tricks with forced browsing is knowing what deserves further investigation and what is useless. Finding the 200 results is going to be one of the first places to start. And out of a potentially huge array of resources that could be tested in a forced browsing attack, and sometimes you'll see this referred to as directory busting as well. OWASP used to have a directory buster tool before it got rolled into their zap tool. So whether it's forced browsing or directory busting, there's going to be a heap of results and knowing what to look for in terms of what could be genuinely useful is a great place to start. So that's forced browsing. Add that to spidering and you start to learn an awful lot about how the website works. Let's move on and have a look at another similar but different approach. And that's directory traversal.